Welcome to the 2018 seasons of the Wealth Standard Podcast, celebrating life, liberty, and property. You are listening to Liberty Season 2. Hey everyone, welcome to the Wealth Standard Podcast, a very special edition of the Wealth Standard. In case you can't tell, I am not Patrick Donahoe. Uh, I am actually, my name is Chunga. I've been a, a regular guest here and co-host on the Wealth Standard for a long time. Uh, this is our second season of 2018. Uh, Liberty is the name of the season. This is episode 13. And I'm here as your host on this very special episode because we're going to turn the tables on one Patrick H. Donahoe. Mm -hmm. uh, this is very exciting for me because I get to kind of sit here and stick him with, with needles and pins over the next couple of minutes. Uh, because Patrick has just barely, uh, just barely released his very first book. Mm -hmm. So now we can say, welcome to the show. Welcome to the Wealth Standard, CEO, entrepreneur, philanthropist, and author. I thought you were going to start with, I discovered what your middle initial stands for and start hazing me. Well, I, actually, I have no idea. I, I, might, I may tell you. What is it? I may Patrick I may H. You. Herbert. Yeah. No. Horatio, you, you'll ne you would never guess. Really? Should I, leave you, should I leave you hanging, or should we? Should I just give it? Should I just give it to you? This is, this is what I was hazed with when I was little. You got hazed because of your middle name. <laughs> yeah, because it's not. I mean, most people have you know a, a name middle name, uh, but I have a family name as a as a middle name. Okay, let's hear it. Let's hear it. You sure? Yeah, yeah. I want to know this. That like my middle name. Yeah, your middle name. The pa one I was hazed for. Patrick Hanbury. Han. I think that's a very regal name. Hanbury. That's the first time I think it's ever been called Regal, but I appreciate that. Patrick Hanbury Donahoe. Yeah. That's like a proper Irish name right there, man. Yeah, there's lots of syllables. It's lots of syllables in that whole pronunciation, yeah. I think it's great. So I actually named my so my son's middle name is is Hanbury too. So Really? Yeah. I I, so I Jackson, actually Jackson Hanbury. I actually quite like it. Yeah. I, I don't think there's anything silly about hey, it. I so. I think yeah, it's one of those nerds were picked on. Right, Grow sure. when we were when we were growing up, sure. And now they're the most brilliant people, and the whole jock scene is like dissipating, you know. So it's one of those like, you know, if you had Michael or John, like you know, you had a normal name, but if you had like yeah. a weird like Hanbury, like what does Hanbury mean? Oh, I think it's great. Yeah, anyway. No, I think it's wonderful. Cool. Anyway, right. this is Sorry. a very special. Tangent. Tangent. You know, we're we're doing for 2018. We're doing three seasons this year. Uh, life, Liberty, and Property, which mm -hmm. was first coined by John Locke. Mm -hmm. uh, if you don't know what we're talking about, go research it. It's a fascinating story. But you also used those three principles as a bit of a cornerstone for your book. Mm -hmm. So first of all, your book is called? Uh, it's right here. It's on the video, Heads I Win, Tails You Lose. Correct. Yeah. And uh, And there's a whole story behind that as well, but you use John Locke's principles as a cornerstone of the book. But yeah. I, and I've got yeah. a whole bunch of questions about that, but okay. before we get into it here in, uh, in this episode of the Wall Standard Podcast, I want to know uh, why now? When it comes to the, oh, book, the book, because you, yeah, you've been doing this for you've been doing what you do now for well over it's a true. decade. Yeah, two thousand seven. And it seems to me within the financial space mm -hmm. that one of the first things you do mm -hmm. uh, is you write a book. Yeah. When you're in the financial space, book equals credibility, right? Mm -hmm. I've seen guys that have been in the business a few months that put out a book. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So you waited well over a decade to publish. Mm -hmm. How come? Oh, man. Well, there's a lot of there's a lot of reasons. Uh, I would say I would say first, uh, in two, you know, when I first started, I I I didn't really know what I was doing. Right. I, I, okay. I had learned about what we do and there were books already written. Yeah, uh, on it that I uh, followed and learned from. So it never it never occurred to me. Actually, the first time it did occur to me was uh, a conversation I had with uh, Ken McElroy. He's a you know, uh, rich dad advisor. Has written a few books. Brilliant guy. And it was I think it was 2010 or 2011. Mm -hmm. And he's like, y you have to write a book about this. And I'm like, there's books out there. And, and that's where I would say that's where it first occurred to me. And then I attempted to write one in 2013, I think 2012 or 2013, mm -hmm. and it, you know it just didn't didn't feel right. We had a complete version, but it it didn't feel it didn't feel like it had the content I wanted or told the story that that I felt 
uh, like I wanted to have my name. I'm on top one of, of those few people mm-hmm. that has had the privilege of reading that book. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I was lucky enough to Sorry read about it. that. And no, you know what? It's not. <laughs> it's not terrible. But you know what? It was missing mm-hmm. was you. Yeah. It was really yeah. missing your story. Uh-huh. And um, it, it sounds t- by what you're saying that you were very much a student mm-hmm. uh, for for pretty much the entire time you've been doing this. Mm-hmm. And now you feel like you have enough. You you yeah. you have enough experience that that you can offer something in form of a book. Yeah, I would say it's a it's a collective experience, right? Because because it's it's not necessarily a, a telling. It's it's a book that you know goes through the entire uh, not the entire story, but a lot of the story of paradigm. But then it also hits which is on, not it's a, it's a it's a painful story at times too. Uh, in a, yeah, in a sense, and I, those are that's where like, I think the greatest learning uh, learning occurs. But it also tells the story of of people, people we've worked with, people we've interacted with, and that is I I believe where a lot of the meaning behind the book came from. Mm-hmm. Where you know I, I started to accumulate some stories and because uh, when you do business with somebody, especially with what we do at at uh, at Paradigm Life and the service that we offer. It's not this like overnight change. In a sense, there's some you know mental paradigm perspective shift, but as far as the results of it, you know, it's it's one of those things that doesn't happen overnight. It's not a flash in the pan. You don't double your money. It's it's uh, it's, it's not some, a get rich quick. No, scheme. no gim- yeah. the, the the gimmick factor is is relatively relatively low. So the idea is, you know, the actual change of human behavior. I've realized isn't. Uh, I think people can get excited about something and start to look at things differently. But for something to actually take hold and affect permanent behavior change, it's, it, it, takes, a, it takes a while. And so I, the, the stories, especially the most, uh, one, the ones I found as most significant and the ones that are told in, in the book are, are stories that took you know, years and years to, uh, to really manifest uh, as far as what would have been the end result versus what the result has been because sure. of you know some of the things we helped uh, help them do. So that's where you know it for me it was a it, the book now is it, it felt right and it took a long I mean it took a really long time to do it. How like long eight, did this 18 take? Eighteen months, you? about eighteen. Uh, yeah, about eighteen months. And it, and it's one it, it's something that uh, we spent a t- I spent a ton of time on and revision after revision. You know, but I, but, but now it feels it feels right. I, I honestly, you know, I would say three months ago, I I would have still scrapped it, even though we spent that recently. Yeah, a ton of time, ton of uh, money on it, but I I still would have scrapped it because I wanted to make sure that it it actually you know represented what I I wanted it to, and uh, and I think it does. I, I well I know it does. So for people who are who are maybe new to you, or new to the wealth standard or may not know what Paradigm Life is, which is one of your two companies mm-hmm. that you own. Mm-hmm. Uh, the book focuses on, it, you, it, can people can people pick this up? Does it focus on numbers? Does it focus on uh, kind of the, the high altitude charting and, and mm-hmm. planning, uh, basically a high altitude of what you do at Paradigm Life? Mm-hmm. Or is it your personal story? Both. I, it, I would say the, the personal story is part of it. And, and okay. it's really where the lessons were learned. And it, not just for for me personally, but uh, what we t- what I took as life lessons, right? Business lessons, and how I you know turn that into different services and strategies associated with uh, what we what we do. But the I- the idea in the end, because there's a subtitle of the book, which is that idea. Uh, it's heads I win, tails you lose, which is essentially a, a phrase to to set yourself up so that you don't lose, right? So that you, you're you always in the driver's the seat. And and then, you know, the second part of that is a a financial strategy to reignite the American dream. Mm -hmm. And the financial strategy side of things is part of the book so that there there's some numbers in there and also ideas around what strategy financial strategy actually is. And 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 people should know that you have a study guide that accompanies this, too. So mm -hmm, it's not you know, you're not just stuck. Yeah. With and, with this high altitude, you can really get into it and learn yeah. an awful lot through the book and yeah, the study yeah. guide. And the and the American Dream side of it is, you know, really understanding the roots of what that means and also yeah. what it's become, and and so I to kind of define that that challenge that's out there where you know this is what you know America really meant when it was founded and this is what America means today. And I, I tried to tell the story around how that mindset or that perspective 
has influenced uh, what a person does with their personal financial strategy and the results that they get. Uh, and so we've, you know, we have lots of resources we've accumulated over the years, video and podcasts and webinars. And, and so the, the book really uh, does a good job of, of summarizing all of that. Mm -hmm. And then we do have some other summary material that's in a, you know, an online study guide that's complimentary. Are you worried at all? Because this is, you are an atypical guy, first of all. Mm -hmm. You're an atypical guy, and the book is very atypical as well. Are you worried at all that, that it's going to, that you're going to encounter people that may question the credibility of this mm -hmm. at all? Uh, that's a good question, of course. I mean, when, I would say whenever you do something atypical or, or against the grain, uh, there's always there's always that. There's a mm -hmm. common way of doing things out there, and, you know, that's... Uh, that's the way that it is. Atypical, you know, is is shooting against the grain, and I I feel that in the end, what's right for for somebody has to align with what they want for themselves. And I'm not saying that this is right for everyone. It's a different way of of doing things and looking at things. Uh, but I I fundamentally disagree really with the the pursuit most people have right now, mm -hmm. and and how I define that in the book is. You know, you you have a, a population or a society that doesn't like what they do for the majority of their day. Yeah, right? there's some stat out there that, that I heard you say in a speech over the weekend. Mm -hmm. You and I were on the road over the weekend and and you were talking. Uh, there was some sort of figure or stat. Forgive me. I don't have it right in front of me, but it, it's it, people in excess of 70 percent of the American population uh, lives in silent desperation mm -hmm. and hates their job. Yeah. They don't like the life that they've cultivated for themselves, mm -hmm. and 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 there's there's a number of studies like that uh, that are that are out there. Yeah, uh, and it, and it's still it's still prevalent, and so I don't think the studies have really made a big difference. It's just, yeah, they're just studies. Mm -hmm. and usually, there's a sample size here and there, but but in general, just my my interaction with people is that they they don't want to do what they're doing forever. And I think that is, it's understandable. And I, I feel the, the narrative of, of work, right, or what you should do with a career, you know, has been really uh, perpetuated, you know, for decades upon decades. Uh, and, and it's hard for, you know, a society to, to shift gears from, you know, one direction to another, but Grow I up, believe go to school, get a job, yeah, get it, work and, at the job, have some kids retire. Yeah, and the purpose behind it is money, right? Be people look at, okay, I want to be a dentist, not because I like, you know, looking in people's mouth all day long. Yeah. Right. Or, you know, the other type of medical professions, especially, uh, but there are, you know, whether it's a, a lawyer or whether it's, um, you know, uh, executives or, or what, whatever the case may be, going to business school and getting you know graduate degrees, the primary driver of that is mm -hmm. is uh, is money usually, or at least that's what the narrative has been. Mm -hmm. But these days, the opportunities that exist to find an environment that is is con that aligns with you know your personality, that aligns with you know something you enjoy doing, is is more possible than ever. And and that's the you know you look at the the part of the narrative of the, of the book which I think is profound. Yeah, that's kind of an over the overriding factor. Yeah, of the, book, the, right? the personal financial uh, services industry is geared toward helping a person exit what they're doing. Okay, exit something they don't like doing, and so individuals find themselves deferring you know their income today okay. for decades upon decades for a future where they don't have to do what they're doing anymore, right? Which is, you know, usually, so defi usually a, defined a, as retirement. Yeah, and it's a bit of a, a mirage or a pipe dream, uh, according to you. Because and I do believe that. It, because right now, if you, again, going to statistics, and these are just studies, but the statistics show that it's not probable, that people are living a lot longer yeah. And and I would say if you were to look at the fundamentals of just the fact that this retirement planning idea uh, works or doesn't work is to look at the professionals. Because right now, if you were to look at one of the major uh, challenges that our country is facing uh, is with pensions. And pensions are usually run by federal government, state uh, and local governments. Uh, and, you know, corp some corporations have them. Uh, but right now there are... Uh, Literally, most states are m massively underfunded, which means that they don't have enough money to pay out all of the 
retirement benefits to the people that they have promised promised that to. Right. And so this the, the point I'm trying to make is these are professional money managers that have, you know, hundreds of billions, collectively trillions of dollars right. okay, at their disposal to invest. And that's all they do every single day. They can't figure it out for a number of reasons, right? There's some economic reasons. There's also some life expectancy reasons. But those are the professionals. Yeah. And looking at the idea behind putting money, you know, into different vehicles for that same purpose with, you know, an expected result in the end, which is money that replaces you having to work. It's just the 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 more society improves and evolves, the less likely that is going to to be. I mean, there's studies out there that we're going to live beyond uh, beyond 100. Yeah, 120 was more, the latest one I read. Potentially, you uh, you also have you know a lot of economic disruption where you have you know businesses that are. Uh, going you know becoming obsolete g you know ge businesses that can't keep up with the innovation that's going on right it, it, not i'm not saying that ge is obsolete but it was you know removed from the s&p 500 but the idea the idea in the end is that things are moving so rapidly in the future is i in my you know perspective is really interesting and exciting but most people are looking at the future uh in their rearview mirror Right. Thinking mm -hmm. that there are some patterns or some things that have happened in the past that will tell the future. And I just don't think that that's realistic because of how, you know, ad advancement uh, is causing industries to go out of business, causing, uh, you know, uh, jobs to change, uh, inventing completely new uh, industries. Right. Well, so there's there's so much change going on, projecting out and deferring, you know, your savings and, and essentially your life for you know, at 60 or 65 years old, I just, I think it's more unrealistic than ever. And it's, it's hard for people to grasp because that's all that they've ever that's, heard that's in regards to what they should do with their money. Well, this is really refreshing to hear on so many different levels. Uh, I, I'm, I'm sure that there are going to be a lot of young people that are going to be checking this out, students uh, and the like, that are going to hear this. And it is going to be a breath of fresh air because they've heard the same thing for so long. Mm -hmm. We all have, not just young students that are just coming out of college, but we've all heard the same thing. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't agree with you more. If you take a look at, uh, if you take a look at, I'm, okay, you can take a look at Austrian economics that says we should have had an adjustment a long time ago, yet we continue to grow. Mm -hmm. Or you can take a look at 2007. We didn't have smartphones really in 2007. We kind of did. Mm -hmm. We didn't have the internet in 1987. Mm -hmm. We it, Things are changing so quickly mm -hmm. that ultimately we don't know. Sure. We yeah, have would, no idea. Yeah, and I would say, you know, maybe hitting on your point with Austrian economics, there's two, there's two uh, the, I would say, points to make there. One is there's a business cycle theory that was uh, – you know, it's still often used and referred to. We've referred to it on the on the podcast a number of times, mm -hmm. where you have a boom and bust cycle that is fueled by you and know, that's, central, that's exactly central what I'm talking about. Right. But also, there's another element of Austrian economics that is, I would say, in very in line with this with this book. It's oh, is very that right? pro free market, pro entrepreneurship, capitalism, where you essentially have people that are given the environment. Uh, and the freedom to solve problems as opposed to problems being solved by Which is what a, we want, a central right? a central a centralized power right or, or a government and it, of course we want that at the same time you know th the narrative is often in you know Washington DC that you know they're the ones responsible for jobs they're the ones that are responsible for prices and they're the ones that are responsible for you know making sure Facebook you know hides our information or whatever <laughs> you know it's, but it's one of those yeah it's one of those things where Austrian economics can be defined in a number of ways there's there's a lot of different economists that have different theories uh, okay. but yeah the business the business cycle which is you know very interesting as far as how they look at that and how it's fueled and how it occurs which i i fundamentally uh agree with but at the same time you have different economies different things going on and so you know the the theory just is an on, is ongoing but then you also have the idea behind you know human beings with the right environment uh can do just brilliant things and that's why they uh you know love the idea of, of free markets and in sure. the end you know there's not there's no such thing as this like you know uh utopian society and there's always going to be conflict there's always going to be issues but when individuals are put in an environment where they have to figure things out that's where they shine and so one of the examples i you know sh uh, talk about in the book is, was actually taken from uh, uh Bill, Bill Bonner who wrote uh, Family Fortunes which mm -hmm. is a, a, an awesome read if you haven't read it and in there it compares uh, Switzerland to Haiti 
And if the, the comparison is really taking the environment of, of Haiti 200 years ago and how that environment created the culture there today. Yeah, there's something about a, you know, a rich, fertile soil, yeah, lots of these, natural resources. All these resources, yeah. you, know, you have beautiful climate. And people were, were in an environment that they didn't really have to figure life out, right? Mm-hmm. They didn't have to uh, survive. But Switzerland didn't have resources. It's dark a lot of the dark, year. You know, cold. And did, did not have good fertile soil. So they had to really figure out how to survive, how to create relationships and partnerships with other countries, right? And, and it really fostered a, a culture Right, that today is is one of the uh, best economies in the in the world. It's obviously tiny, but at the same time, you know, uh, relatively speaking, is, and they've uh, had their fails well. too. I sure. mean, look oh, at yeah. those gigantic oh, yeah. horns. Yeah, they all okay. They <laughs> yeah. listen. They they've made their mistakes. <laughs> Switzerland. That's awesome. <laughs> no, but I would you know it's the principle of it, right? And there's obviously always you know flaws to certain theories, but sure. it's, it's the idea that you know when when individuals are uh, really put in the position of having to survive. Okay, they they make decisions that they otherwise would not have had to make. Okay, had they just been uh, handed out something, right? So that's where you know there's some you know definitely some going against the grain with you know how uh, you know a welfare system works or a support system, a safety net, uh, yeah. and and how you know. But I won't go off on the, on that tangent. But the idea that's a whole other show. Yeah, really, but the yeah. idea in the end is you know that I'm. That I'm uh, alluding to is that we're in an environment right now where there's lots of problems, right? There's a, there's problems associated with uh, uh, aging individuals who did buy into this this idea of uh, retirement. Who were never meant to live. It sounds yeah, crass, yeah. but they just weren't meant to live this long. Th- they didn't prepare to live this long, and they right. didn't plan to live this long, but they Correct. are living longer, and therefore, you know, they don't have uh, a lot of money. And so that's where the opportunity is, you know, how could you provide the services for them uh, that are economical, right, and and help them out. I mean, that's an, that's an opportunity or a challenge right now. Uh, but the idea in the end is for individuals to to really you know open up their mind to the possibilities uh, associated with how they can take their uh, something that they like to do, something that they feel they're talented at, uh, and or maybe just the experience and expertise that they've acquired over over years, mm-hmm. uh, not the Liam Nielsen type of you know experience and and, so and a particular you know, set of skills. A particular set of skills, but uh, but it's you've the, got daughters, man. You'll yeah. use that at some point. But it's the idea of I would say most I, I'm tr- I try to get across the, to those that I talk with that they they have to bet that they're going to be working or contributing, okay, having to make money for the rest of their life, right? I and saw so it's study. one of those like trying to discover, take your expertise and find an environment that aligns with what you like to do, people sure. you like to do it with, and and also, you know, something that aligns with your talents, your abilities and so forth. So that's part of the financial strategy, right? Yeah. Is is uh, looking at yourself as the primary investment instead your greatest, of greatest you you're your own greatest asset. For sure. As, a, all over as the opposed book. to a particular uh, uh, tool or financial, you know, like a financial product, like a, a mutual fund or a life insurance policy or, or a stock or a bond, right? It's looking at you as that primary investment, okay? And the tools then align with, you know, what that initiative is. Okay, so, uh, you know, to finish my thought here, I saw a study, this was only a couple of days ago, that said if you are born after 1968, it is very probable it's they're planning for it. The medical profession is already making preparations for this. Mm-hmm. That if you were born after 1968, odds are that you can live upwards of 150 years old. Mm-hmm. And if you were born after 1980, it's 200 plus years old. If you mm-hmm. can believe, I know it yeah. sounds absolutely far fetched. Mm-hmm. I know with heads heads I win, tails you lose. There is, um, I don't want to say there is a, a an end goal at play with heads I win, tails you lose. But it all kind of focuses on what do you do after? You know, what happens after you've you've done the status quo? What's next? Am mm-hmm. I correct in, in thinking that? Yeah, there's it, it talks about how you can make transitions, make shifts okay. toward and, and it's not this overnight thing where you wake up tomorrow and quit your job and try to pursue some, you know, whatever. That's that's not the intent of the book, nor is it any of the recommendations. It's okay. it's more of a, a shifting of mindset 
and start to look at things differently. I would say first, it's the realization of what you said, you know, and, and I'm sure that there are studies that say that we're going to, you know, life expectancy is, is going to, to go down. Sure. You know, we're all going to be wiped out with, you know, some because of fried disease. foods or something. Yeah. So it's one of it, there's all sorts of theories out there. But but in the end, uh, we don't know what the future is going to hold. Okay? Yeah, I would say if anything to to really grasp is the idea of how humans behaved at, that you know essentially created what we have today as a as a society where you know you don't have to do much to survive right you can right. you can figure out how to you know work on the inner of it for 3 hours a day and then go you know eat eat fast food and play video games the rest of the day right you just you just told everyone my life whatever <laughs> <laughs> but the, you know the you know the the thing that i was saying is that you know it, this is a it's a it's a trend it's a transition right it's an, it's mm-hmm. a, it could be a decade transition it could be 5 years it could be it could be less it could be more but the idea in you know in the end is that i would say part of the american dream which i w- i believe uh was the original original american dream is to have the freedom to pursue something that you uh, aligned with whether it was property ownership whether it was uh, a trade uh and and it was to limit or mitigate restrictions associated with that and today i would say we have lots of restrictions there's lots of laws and so forth but the united states is still you know one of the the even though we may not rank as high in the freedom index we still live in a very free environment where we're able to pursue certain things okay and try to solve uh problems whether it's economical problems or whether it's societal problems or, Te- or technological uh, problems te- technology problems which yeah. i think technology is you know is just one of those those things that applies to every every industry now sure. right as far as making things more efficient uh and making things more productive and you know doing things uh, economically but the I, the idea behind the individual right is to is to realize that and to not necessarily put the blame of a situation on you know the government or an employer uh, or the stock market or you know anyone outside of yourself but it's to take responsibility for your life who you are uh, what you were uh, given as as talents and abilities whether you you know believe in higher power or not it's, there's I think there's uniqueness of uh, for everyone. And and that I would say can align with providing a meaningful service to somebody else in which there's the remuneration of uh, of, of money of, of finances, and and that's where I would say if, if that mindset can shift now, how you look at uh, the world, whether it's your job or whether it's uh, you know the the society in which you live in or your neighborhood or or whatever, uh, of how can I how can I bring value? How can I uh, help solve a problem? And if that becomes the the overriding motivation of behavior, then that uh, that ultimately uh, will lead to uh, whether it's a position at a company or a company itself or self-employment or consulting or contract work. And I, I firmly believe that the future of employment will be very aligned with what people's natural abilities and talents are. So you might as well start start early and, well, and figure it out. Well, if you take a look, you um, this book is very inspiring, first of all. And and I know that you've got a very friendly crowd here in me. I'm, I'm not sitting here busting your hump mm-hmm. over you know different criticisms or different uh, counterpoints that people would have. Yeah. Uh, but going through this process with you, being a part of this, it's yeah. been very yeah, you inspiring. Read, yeah, you did a lot of the ebook stuff. Or the uh, audio book. Yeah. did a lot of the audio book yeah. stuff. And, and had a great time doing it. But it, for me, it's been, I came out of radio. I mean, you want to talk about an industry that's changing. Mm-hmm. And I've been able to take all of those skills that mm-hmm. I learned in a completely different industry mm-hmm. and bring them to bear here. Mm-hmm. And they're every bit as applicable and they're, they're quite valued yeah. uh, here. And, and you talk a lot about this in the book of being able to just make that pivot mm-hmm. and not retire in the sense that you're going to go mm-hmm. play bridge or mm-hmm. play golf all day. I honestly, for me, mm-hmm. I can't think of anything worse. Mm-hmm. That just sounds like hell. But here, for me. but here's the thing: is I know, but for some people, they like to do that. But at the same time, doing that full time is not is not conducive. And and I like to play golf. I like to travel and do stuff with my family. And that's not what what I'm saying is you have to you know give those up and just work. It's you can you can mix you can mix in have that life balance. in a way where you can capitalize. Uh, and benefit from experiences now, because I would I would say that as people are deferring their savings, deferring their life to the future, they are foregoing opportunities now that ultimately will would have shaped them and have yeah. shaped them into something more valuable. But yet they're saving toward this you know future future idea. So a lot of the you know actual application of these ideas and tools are to promote and support. Okay, the the best inv- investment uh, of of you. Okay, but give you peace of mind, give you a level of certainty 
right? That allows you to believe more in yourself uh, and, you know, be able to mitigate the, the ultimate, uh, I would say, challenges you're going to face as you pursue this, this line, uh, line of thinking, because there is, it's, it's a, it's different than the, than, uh, the status quo. Uh, it's different from whatever, whatever financial, most financial advisors tell you what to do. It's, it's ultimately different because it's a different outcome, but this outcome, I would say aligns with a lot of, you know, I would say it's becoming, uh, you know, the narrative of whether it's entrepreneurism or whether it's technology uh, or how fast we're evolving as a, as a people, right? It, it supports uh, it supports all of that. Yet the traditional or the typical, I would say, financial plan is supporting this deferred life until some distant future, right? When you have enough to not have to contribute anymore. Right? I, I was talking to uh, a great guy, good friend of yours. Uh, the guy is my spirit animal. Uh, this guy's an amazing guy, Garrett Gunderson. Yeah. Who yeah, is, uh, he's been a guest here on The Wall yeah. Standard and just a brilliant, brilliant mind. And talking to him about your book, he said, well, this is this this goes after the, the biggest concern I have with financial planning, mm-hmm. which is you're going to generate wealth, you're going to grow wealth, and you're going to off-put your own experience mm-hmm. so that your heirs can go out and destroy it in three years after That's you're gone. Thing, yeah. And so what I took away, my biggest takeaway from Heads I Win, Tails You Lose, mm-hmm. is that it's about the journey. It's mm-hmm. not really about some sort of mirage but that's on the horizon. It's not about the future. It's, now, it's not to be irresponsible about the future. Sure. Okay, but it's to essentially create your present, right? And that present is ultimately your future. And so, you know, Gar- I, Garrett, I, I followed Garrett and have tremendous respect. I can consider him you know, a huge influence uh, in my way of thinking. And uh, he's similar age and just has done some incredible, incredible things with his business and his, and his life. And it's, you know, some of the stuff he shared over the, the weekend in relation to how he teaches his kids and how he, you know, is establishing his family. And I know you have an amazingly close relationship with your son. Yeah. And, and I, I really do believe that, uh, you know, if individuals took this mindset on, they would think differently about not only what they're doing with their money now, but also uh, what they're instilling in their closest relationships relative to what they've learned and who they've become, especially those who have done well. Yeah. And and I often hear with, with clients, which is indicative of uh, their mindset, is that you know they don't want to give their kids money. They don't want to uh, to ruin their lives. They want to, you know, uh, they want the last check they write to bounce. Oh, and I, I would say, say I've said that to you all the time. Yeah, actually. And I would say that is it is it's the the mindset that produces those words. Okay, is yeah. a mindset that uh, you know doesn't think that there's anything that they can contribute to those close relationships. Yeah. Uh, because in the end, I don't want money to ruin my children. Nobody, nobody does. Yeah. And that's why we think the only way to do that is not to give them money. And I would say there's lots of different, whether it's estate planning techniques uh, or a lot, you know, there's a number of things you can do from a strategy perspective to ensure that you know money supports what your children c- could become. But it pro- provides the environment that we just talked about, that Haiti versus Switzerland. It provides an environment where they uh, don't get a blank check. It's an environment where uh, they can discover and have meaningful experiences uh, which shape who they are and the contribution that they can make uh, on society. There's a great movie. Well, it's kind of a cheesy movie, but it was originally a, a book by an estate planning, uh, a blind estate planning uh, attorney, Jim Stavall. And it's called the ultimate gift. Oh, and, I was hoping you, know, you were going to say Rudy. I was hoping Rudy, for Rudy. I don't know. I'm trying to think if there's any any Crap. financial application to that. Anyway, my, but you know, with Jim <laughs> Stavall's, you know, his his uh, well, Rudy's an amazing movie. This this movie is is good because I understand the financial context and right. the family context to it. Yeah. Uh, but you know, I would say it's just one of those. You know where the red fern grows. Well, I guess that's a pretty good movie if you're oh, a kid. But I cried like a baby. The, the, but Still it's one, do. It, yeah, it's one of those. You know, one of those films that you know has you know different context to it. But anyway, the idea is that you know it, it really shaped a, a kid in this book, a, a very entitled, spoiled. Uh, you know, everything was paid for. Child, yeah. it yeah. shaped them into uh, someone who provided. Uh, you know, in- incredible value to others, uh, charity wise, and and uh, and so forth, and. It, the idea behind it was that the estate planning or the the financial planning of his deceased uncle would uh, would ultimately provide that environment for him to discover that within himself. So there's a lot of now it's it's work, 
But at the same time, you know, it's it's something. It's, and it's and a, you don't get effort, that immediate money, gratification. Work. You don't get the, no. you know, in a microwave MTV kind of society, we, we, we're all looking for that, right? Yeah. That's not what heads or heads I win tails you lose is no it, it'll and I would say that you know on the last point with the you know the the legacy planning side of things is that I, I would say we're all wired to want to make a difference for somebody else there is mm. you know those chemicals that go off in our brain when we know that we have helped somebody we know we have been of value to somebody and especially when it's our children yeah right and when we see our children make good decisions or see our children pursue something and succeed at it I mean, who does not like get all sorts of crazy stuff going on in your body because oh, of that? And that yeah. right there, I would say, is is one of the uh, one of the factors that uh, individuals who have accumulated wealth are, are missing is the difference that they can make if they just shift the mindset a little bit uh, and and had obviously some of the you know the entity and and structural uh, documents and tools to pull that off. Yeah. Uh, but my you know my. My perspective associated with you know with life and everything, I, I still feel it's inadequate uh, to to write a book, even though that's you know, interesting. This is it's something I feel strongly about. It's right. one of those things where I, I realize that there's a lot of you know flaws that I have, uh, a lot of you know struggles and challenges that I that I still have. Uh, but in the end, this is the the common uh, the common theme or the common challenge or narrative that I see in people, in people's lives. Mm -hmm. And, it, and I feel that there are, you know, uh, ideas in here that will help people understand how they can make a better dif a bigger difference in, in their life. Uh, and there's some financial strategies as well that, uh, that better support that. But, you know, I plan on, on writing more and, and, and you uh, do. teaching more and obviously learning, I'm, was well, actually learning. my next question because this book is uh, for people. If you want to go check it out, by the way, Pat will never do this because he's way too humble. Uh, it is available now on Amazon, and the audio book is coming out very soon. Yeah. Um. So so go check it out. It's heads I win, tails you lose. It's on Amazon mm -hmm. right now. Costs you about ten bucks, yeah. I think, is, is what it is. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's a big book, and people need to understand that. I was surprised of, at how long it went. Yeah. Yeah. yeah a lot of people. Uh, Within the financial space, their book is 150 pages long, mm -hmm. if that. Typically, okay. this one pushes 400 pages. Well, yes, I think the content 390. Is like three, well, the yeah, just the content itself, I think, is like 320 or something like that. But yeah, it's a yeah, it's book. a lot longer than I thought it was going to be. And there's a lot of information in there. Uh, this was a deeply personal story for you mm -hmm. to tell. Uh, I was surprised at how uh, unflinching your failures are in this book. Mm -hmm. Uh, did you ever get to a point uh, along the, the, the journey of you writing this book where you said, uh, you know what, I can't put this in here? Yeah, I mean, I I totally did People not want to put. People are going to discredit me. People are going to judge me. Or... No, it wasn't. It wasn't that. I I you know, it, it's there's just personal things that I want to. I would rather be private about. Uh, but at the same time, you know, bec I've. Uh, you know, I'm in a, a business or an industry where you meet so many people. And you and find those, their soul to you, you right? find those common themes and, and narratives of life. But the one thing that I've come to understand is that life could end tomorrow. Life could end in a week. It, it, there's there's a fragile. It's this interesting, you know, this fragile nature of what life is. And so the reason why I included it in there is because, you know, I wanted this to be uh, part of my legacy because I knew that my stories could potentially help my children, yeah. uh, help my family. Uh, and and help and help others even you know strangers, so so that's where you know I decided to include uh, a lot of that so that it would help uh, those that I love and, and care about uh, understand where some of these ideas came from. Yeah, having having spent some time in the public eye, uh, I've been extremely impressed and and have a lot of respect because there's a lot of bruises in this book. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of you failing. A lot of you keeping things from your wife, mm -hmm. uh, and you, you much better man than I am because mm -hmm. you put it all in the book. Mm -hmm. So the next time around, you know, the next book, have you have you started thinking about how to incorporate? Because I don't know how you make mm -hmm. your next book this personal. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Is it going to be focused more on business, or have you even started thinking about it? No, I ha yeah, I have a lot of. I mean, ideas are are definitely not my weak my weak thing. Yeah, right? you're, it's, you're, it's yeah. you know implementing where you know. That's not How to that's put not it a strong you know not a strong so that's why I have a great you know great team including you, but the uh, you know I have I, I have ideas and you know it's it's one of those when um you know I I have 
uh, enough and I feel like it's uh, the right time to, to put that out, then, you know, I will. But I, I understand the process now and I realize, you know, a lot of things that I would have done different with the book, whether it's preparation or notes or whatever. Yeah. So hopefully it doesn't take, uh, you know, like four or five years to actually. You, you did something. Um, <clears throat> and I think this speaks volumes about your character. You did something that I've never seen a business owner do, and and I'm not saying that it hasn't been done. I just haven't seen it. You took the names of every employee you have ever had, mm -hmm. every single one of them, mm -hmm. and you put them in the book, yeah. and you said thank you. Yeah. These are people that that have perhaps left on bad terms. Yeah, these are people that have been fired in mm -hmm. some cases, mm -hmm. uh, maybe even legal action mm -hmm. at different points. Mm -hmm. And then there are also people in there that you that you still have, like me, yeah. for example, yeah. uh, have a great relationship with. Mm -hmm. So they're all there in the book. Um, why did you decide to do that? Why did you put every name of every employee in the book, even the ones? Because I don't know that I could do that for some of my detractors. I don't know that I'd want to give them that validation. And, and you know, and I, you know, not to say that I don't have ill ill, Ill feelings, uh, because I, I I do in in a number of different ways and. You know, I would say part of it is me. It's part of, you know, my my ignorance and part of, you know, probably bad decisions uh, I've made on my part. Uh, but also I realized that, you know, you have to you have to give credit to those who shaped who you are. And, and that's where, you know, if I didn't have bad business experience or people experience, then uh, I wouldn't know what I know today. Right. Yeah. And oftentimes, you know, those those painful situations are, are actually pretty, uh, pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. Because they they show you that wow this sucks uh, I probably shouldn't do this again anymore you know or, yeah right. and that and that's where you know I look at all the people that have that have been here uh, they, they contributed in one respect whether it was the lack of con contribution or contribution you learned but something. nonetheless I learned you know and you know relationships are always uh, two two sided or multi sided right and yeah you know there's there's things that were done but there's things that I've you know that I've done and we're just all as human beings trying to figure things out and that's where you know I, I tell the story in the end of the book of you know one of those pivotal moments where I realized that what I wanted to do uh, was was different than what was going on uh, at the time in in business. And, and that's where we made some, you know, and you were involved, you were there, I think you came on like right in the middle of it, uh, but it was I'd, one of I'd those. Been here, I'd been here about seven months yeah. when all hell broke loose. Yeah, and there were, there were, you know, there were times where I did not want to come into the office, right? Can I, can I share a story? It's a very personal story. There was a one point you and I had a conversation in your office mm -hmm. and you and I have had some very, very heartfelt, mm -hmm. very personal conversations mm -hmm. together. And you looked at me square dead in the eye and said, I don't know if I want to do this anymore. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I can do this anymore. Yeah. With all these people and, and everybody that I'm responsible for, it's hard for me to come in sometimes. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. I mean, how do you how do you come back from being in a place like that? Mm -hmm. And is that in the book? Uh, do I, I, no, I don't think I go into a lot of those details there. But I, I would say the, you know, the 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 primary driver was me realizing what I did want to do. And it had nothing to do with the actual activities. It had mm -hmm. to do with the environment in which I did it. So you had to change your environment so that yeah. you could you could re-engage yeah. on a level that your team needed you to. Mm -hmm. and, for yeah. and fortunately, and that's where I look at you know, just how, how profound it is to get a group of people to do, to do something. And it, for those that have never had to orchestrate a group of people, and I'm not talking like, you know, five people or a, or a, a team, right? A team of 10 or a team of five. You're talking hundreds. You know, when you have, you know, the, the I would say it starts with dozens, yeah. right? Where you have that, that level. And if there is not a, a, a centralized set of principles and values and standards by which, you operate or behave then you're going to have major conflict and that's what we had and yeah. and that's where not to say that you know people uh were doing bad things it's just people were people and they were not aligned with a central theme yeah and the lack of that had people essentially establish their own theme right as right? as human nature will dictate that's what human nature will do and so yeah. that and that's you know, and that's where, you know, we revamped our entire culture and it took, you know, a long time and it was, it was painful. And we lost, we lost a lot of people. Lost too. a lot of people and, yeah. it, you know, and, and not on good terms. Yeah. And, it, but it was one of those, it was one of those things where I, I realized that these, these are my values. This is, and, it, you know, the, it, of course it was, 
you know, to my the business that I run. So I was able to establish that. Yeah. Um, but I got the buy in of those that are closest to me who wanted to do the same thing because we were all sick of it. Yeah. And nobody can really do much good in an environment that it was like that. And it yeah. wasn't like that. I mean, it wasn't horrible. It sounds really ominous. Yeah, and it, and totally it just, does. it wasn't. Yeah. But everybody that was in the office yeah. could tell that things were just kind of left of center. For sure. Absolutely. You know, or yep. just kind of askew. Mm -hmm. And it took, um, it took a couple of months and it was uh, productive discomfort, yeah. as we like to say here. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think, you know, and for people who don't know, I mean, the company is just banging. You're, yeah. you're doing a wonderful job. And, and I think it's very inspiring yeah. to see a guy of your caliber mm -hmm. that can get to that point where just burned out and just questioning. And I think that's pretty common yeah. for everybody, especially in a super stressful, high functioning position like you're yeah, in. I agree. I mean, the, the, we have, we have a lot of work to do, uh, you know, but there's, it, it's, it's a different feel and, and I love coming, you know, it's, it's one of those, that's my litmus test is, you know, do I want to go in yeah. right, to, to the office or am I, in my, I know I have to go in, but do I want to, am I motivated? And I am like, I, I yeah. love, I love the environment that we're in. I love the people that are here. Uh, it's, uh, like I said, there's, we're still, we're still transitioning. We're still, we're still growing, but a lot of that, you know, a lot of that is, is told uh, in the book because I believe that this is, this isn't just a, you know, unique experience that, uh, that this company uh, or I'm going through. I mean, this, I would say that this is what most Americans are going through, right? They spend right. the majority of their life, right? Sleeping and at work. Right. Yeah. And it's one of those like if, if you are there's not a there's, there's never been a time in history where there's not more opportunity to find a position or a job or something to do that's meaningful that you like doing in an environment that is is healthy, rewarding, motivational. Uh, and it, it's more it's more possible today than ever, I, I believe. Oh, and, indeed. And, and yeah. it's, it all starts within within you your greatest asset because after all you know I, again i'm another example of this i came out of an environment where i got to goof off mm -hmm. every day mm -hmm. all day and even that was eating chocolate cake <laughs> at every meal even right. that had its downside mm -hmm. and i think a lot of people they may go into a to a career or a profession without understanding hey look this is going to suck mm -hmm. At times, it's yeah. going to suck for you, mm -hmm. and it's all in the way you handle it. Even Absolutely. in the best possible conditions, you're going to have to deal with yeah. things. Great point, excellent point, and that, and that's where you know that's the human the human condition, right? We don't have this, uh, you know, we, we wake up with the same attitude and perspective and energy level every day. I mean, yep. we can do what it takes to to be as consistent as possible, yep. right? But you do have to manage, you know, different circumstances, and we're and we're humans. But at the same time, you know, if you if you create a centralized theme by which you make you make those decisions mm -hmm. now you don't rely necessarily on what you think you should do you rely on what you know the culture and values tell you to do and right and, and that's what you that's you what the pre-subscribe to and that's what the book gives you yeah, absolutely. uh you know the, the beginning steps to take correct mm -hmm. um is there anything else is there anything about the book and this is a total curveball, so forgive me. But is yeah. there anything about the book now that it's out and released and is a bestseller? Mm -hmm. My now we we haven't even talked about that yet. Yeah. This is actually a bestseller on Amazon, and congratulations! I think it was it was a yeah it was it was awesome. It was great great launch. Is there anything about the process of the book, or the book itself that you would change? So when people get wow. to that point in the book, they're going to go, oh, this is what Patrick was talking yeah. about. Uh. I think I think the sequence is uh, is is pretty good. I would say there are some chapters that get into strategy, and and I would say that you know the study guide has some supplemental information. So the study guide is you fall online. back on the study guide. Yeah, it's yeah. online. You can access it for for free even if you haven't bought the book. But the idea is that that will you know not just be kind of this like you know static once one time thing it's it's going to evolve with additional information as we get feedback of people that are reading the book you but, can change the study guide yeah. as you go but i was surprised how quickly people read that book uh, read the book i mean there's a number of people that got through it in two or three sittings which was interesting which kind of freaked me out as a guy yeah. who's i you know i've read this thing i don't know how many times i've you listened, listened to it yeah listen listened to the audiobook i don't know how many times know, you just kind of sound like me now uh i had a dream can just i just kidding. can i tell everybody this story i had a dream last sunday night while editing, going through the post-production process on the audiobook, mm -hmm. that, and in my dream, you know, my inner monologue, and when I spoke to people, it was actually your voice. <laughs> That's amazing. Not my voice after listening to your voice so much, which is one of the weirdest experiences yeah. of my entire life, honestly. I woke up 
really kind of freaked out. But you, not that you don't have a great voice, yeah. but it's been it's been a lot of fun. Uh, I would encourage everybody go check it out on Amazon. Heads I win, tails you lose. Patrick H. Donahoe. It's only about ten bucks. It's it's a real steal. You can also get digital copies of it and. Uh, the audiobook is coming out soon. Now, a, a reminder for you, if you do want to go check out the study guide ahead of time, you can go to headsiwin.com forward slash study guide. Head, heads or tails I win dot com. And I've already screwed go. it up. Okay. Heads or tails I win dot com. dot com forward slash study guide. You got it. You got it. And uh, I recommend, um, would you say, I think this is a book for everybody. Do you think young people, if you're in college, um, yeah. or, or yeah. is this, is this going to be a book for them Any, or do you anyone, recommend that they, anyone that's thinking about, you know, their, their job, their money, their, uh, their, and their future. Yeah. Cause we, we've spent a lot of time talking about retirement and that end game. Mm -hmm. It's, that's not really what the book is about, is it? No. Yep. It's an infinite game. There's no end. Well, there is, but. And, no and go back and listen is. to some some different uh, podcasts that we've done here on the Well Standard about the finite game and the infinite game, and yep. that that will definitely help you as well. Patrick, it's been an honor to be the host. I think I'm I'm one of the only people other than you to have ever hosted the Well Standard, so I feel honored yeah. there. Yeah. Uh, congratulations! Thank you very much. Congratulations on creating a best selling book, and I think everyone faces and names of people you will never actually get to meet are going to be influenced by this. And so I, I congratulate so. you. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, that's it for this episode of The Well Standard. Thanks for listening, everybody. Patrick will be back next week uh, as the host with another fine guest. Uh, and we do recommend that you uh, leave us a review on iTunes, if you would, please. That helps us tremendously. And if you like the book, if you like Heads I Win, Tails You Lose, uh, once you grab it on Amazon, boy, we'd sure love a review there. Yep. Please go. get. If you don't like it, I'll give you your money back. Just send the book Don't, back. No, he your won't. Money. Don't listen to him. No, he won't. <laughs> but just, you know, go review something else. So anyway, uh, of course you're going to love it. It's uh, it's a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun doing it. And mm. thanks again, Patrick. We'll see you next week here on The Wall Standard. Thanks, Shunko. Thank you for joining us as The Wealth Standard Podcast spends all of 2018 celebrating life, liberty, and property. Be sure to leave us a review on iTunes, and we'll see you on the next one.